Hey everybody, happy Wax on Wednesdays. I thought it would be a lot of fun today to show. I'm testing out several papers. I tested out five different papers uh, for use with cyanotypes. Cyanotypes are a 19th century photographic process. And if you'd like to see exactly how to start out doing this fun process that you can lend, give an encaustic finish to, then check out the Creative Adventurer process or project uh, for uh, last month. And you can see how to get started in these fun uh, ways of doing these cyanotype prints. Now I've tested out five different papers and I'm going to start out with the fluid 100 cold press finish paper. It's a 140 pound watercolor paper. It's a beautiful watercolor paper and I did these small five by seven pieces and you can see here that they had a lot of detail so I'm rating them on a scale of detail depth of color of the cyan color and also durability. So I'm testing them on these three criteria for each paper. And this next one is, and I used both a variety of watercolor paper and also photographic print making paper. So paper that you would print your photographs out on. Um, they're all uh, cotton to some degree, some of them 100%, some of them um, let 25% and so on. Um, this next one is, um, you can see that there is a lot of detail and a lot of depth and this one, and I was quite surprised on some of these papers because a lot of them are not my favorite for painting. And this one was the Fabrino Hot Press watercolor paper. And this actually, I've had this for quite a while. It's not my favorite for painting, um, but for the uh, cyanotypes, they worked very, very well. So this is the studio watercolor. It's hot press. It's 140 pound paper and it's 25% cotton. It's also archival and acid free. So um, perfect for cyanotypes. I did about the same length of exposure on all five papers. So each one I did about an hour because when I do my cyanotypes, a lot of times I layer them and it takes just a little bit longer and where I'm at in the world in this time of year, which is fall. So I exposed them for about an hour and um, each, and you can see in this Fabrino watercolor paper, all of the detail and the depth that was achieved. Uh, with this paper. So I really enjoyed this paper and um, it the depth here of the cyan on the edges here. Now I diluted a little bit in the middle, which is why it's lighter, but you can still see a lot of detail, but you can see the depth of color there on the edges is absolutely beautiful. This next paper, again, was not my favorite for photograph printing. Um, I do uh, love the feel of the paper. It's very velvety. And this is the Hannah Mule uh, Fine Art Matte Photo Paper. And this one, I would say, was my favorite. It had the most depth and um, depth of color, depth of detail, and it also held up the best. And when I say that, I meant mean for the washing. It, this paper needs to be washed for at least 10 minutes to get the chemical back out of the paper. Some of, some of these papers held up better uh, in the washing process than others. This is the Hannah Mule Fine Art Inkjet Paper. It's a, like I said, it's a very beautiful paper. It's 100% cotton and um, it's a smooth finish and that will, um, and it's a photo rag, photo rag so it's 100% cotton photo rag. It's 308 GSM. So but there's several papers that I used in this experiment that were also a um, a textured paper that were photo for photographic prints um, that they were meant for an inkjet printer for photographs and they have a slight texture to them just like a watercolor paper. This next paper is a perfect example of that and this is the Epson Fine Art Velvet paper and it has a slight texture to it like a cold uh, cold press watercolor paper would. It's a very, it's a fine art printing paper meant for an inkjet printer. It's 100% cotton and is acid free or, and of course archival because it's meant for fine art photographs. So this cyanotype ended up having a good depth of color. You can see on the edges where it's not diluted, it has a very deep cyan color, very beautiful. It had a okay detail, not as good as a couple of the other ones did. 
You can see here compared side by side with the deepest color, which was the Hannah Mule. Um, this one has a slightly, you can, and that's a fun thing to tell too, is that they have a slightly different color. Each one of them has a slightly different uh, tone to them when compared with the other papers. So this one was okay. It wasn't the best one. Um, and it got a little bit um, hard to wash fell apart a little bit, the paper did, you can tell with the detail. And this last one surprised me. I thought it would end up being one of the best ones. This is the Arches Cold Press Paper. And same thing when the washing, the, the cyan color in the edges you can see is very beautiful and deep. So the depth of color is good. The detail was okay, uh, but um, a lot of the detail I think was lost. And I think that it, began to degrade uh, when it was washed. I did the same exact process to each of the five papers. And uh, with these last two, I saw that the paper was beginning to degrade. It even, um, the top layer lifted in, in a couple of the areas. So uh, not completely a tear all the way through, but you can tell that the paper was actually disintegrating. So with, again, with the same exact, exact pressure of the wash and exact same time for the wash. So this is the 300 pound arches, uh, 140 pound, sorry, 300 GM, uh, watercolor paper, 100% cotton, and it is the heaviest watercolor paper, a beautiful watercolor paper. I love this for watercolor, but for the cyanotype, it just didn't, it wasn't the best in printing. And I'll continue with these to experiment um, and compare these papers again other different, under different circumstances. But you can see compared together, um, the fluid watercolor that did not reach the depth which is the smaller five by sevens, didn't reach the depth of colors as some of the others. Um, and the Hannah Mule and the uh, Fabrino, I feel did the best in all three categories. So just a little bit of a helpful, helpful tips if you're looking for some paper to use for cyanotypes.